There have been persistent rumors that alien wreckage and remains from Roswell, New Mexico were stored in Hangar 18 at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. In the 1960s, responding to the rumors, then-Senator Barry Goldwater asked former Air Force Chief of Staff Curtis LeMay, what's inside Hangar 18? According to Goldwater, LeMay said, don't ever ask me that question again. But Sightings is asking, what is inside Hangar 18? There have been a certain percentage of this volume of reports that have been made by credible observers of relatively incredible things. But where are these incredible things today? There is a long and voluminous paper trail of evidence that points in one direction, that points to a top secret location known as Hangar 18 at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. Many UFO researchers believe that at one time, wreckage from Roswell and other UFO crash sites, as well as the bodies of alien beings, were brought here for underground storage. Of course, the Air Force denies these charges, but ufologists counter that their denials are a prime example of the fox watching the hen house door. But why Hangar 18? when there were desert bases much closer to the original crash sites. Why truck the wreckage to a base thousands of miles away? There were several advantages to using Wright-Patterson, according to Professor Michael Swords. Wright-Patterson had several elements associated with it. It had a standard Air Force base at Patterson Field, and it had a high-technology testing facility at Wright Field. In between the two fields, it also had something unique to our government, and that was the Technical Intelligence Organization, so-called T2, or what became the Foreign Technology Division. During the Second World War, T2, the Foreign Technology Division, would receive crashed German rockets and aircraft. Their job was to reverse engineer the craft. T2's quarters were allegedly far underground in a maze of secret laboratories at Wright-Patterson. This is the sort of division that would have been appropriate to use for the investigation of UFO research and ultimately became the home for Project Sign and Blue Book. Rumors of UFO secrets being kept here have become part of Dayton, Ohio folklore. In a series of news reports, local anchor Carl Day set out to determine if any of the rumors were true. Well, recently we investigated the rumors about Hangar 18 and in particular the Roswell connection to, to Wright Patton. In July 1947, eyewitnesses at the Roswell crash site saw military personnel load wreckage onto trucks and cart it away. Destination unknown. We found that the wreckage from Roswell, probably at least part of it, did arrive at Wright Pat around that time. What happened to it? We couldn't find any record of that. We found that was sort of interesting. If, as the Air Force maintains, the wreckage was a weather balloon, why would it be transported via secret convoy from Roswell to Dayton? And once there, why would all record of a weather balloon retrieval disappear? The answer may lie here with Alfred Letty, an engineer who, upon his retirement from T2, received a U.S. patent for this strange flying saucer design. Al Ludding could have been influenced in his design by an alien type of technology because when you look at his design, it is a low aspect sort of ellipsoid shaped craft with two tiny tabs on the back that was taken extremely seriously by the Air Force. It was during Ludding's tenure at Wright-Patterson that the Air Force conducted Project Blue Book, its only publicly acknowledged UFO study. Ufologists believe Blue Book was simply a cover designed to divert attention away from the real work going on deep underground. According to the nephew of then Deputy Head of Procurement Jack Donahue, autopsies were being performed on humanoid, but not human, creatures. Uh, my Uncle Jack had a top secret security clearance uh, when he worked at Wright-Patterson the complete time. The strangest story that he ever accounted to me uh, was the day that he asked me if I had heard of a UFO crash out in Phoenix, Arizona. He said, we have the bodies from the crash. He said, we went down to the cold storage area. Donahue allegedly told his nephew that he was led down a series of twisting hallways to a secret room. There was a stainless steel table in this room that was arranged a little bit like a laboratory. The man, he said, look at this. 
Jack looked at the body. Jack told me that at the time they were doing full autopsies on the bodies. The head was shaped basically like a human head, only it was small. He said, we better not spend very much time here, and they left the room. I tried to bring it up at a later date. He said, forget him. Just forget about the whole incident. And I said, what do you mean, forget it? He said, just forget it. It never happened. Well, there are still people that absolutely believe that alien bodies and UFO wreckage are still here on this base, and that the bodies are kept in cryogenic suspension somewhere underneath Wright Field. Legendary UFO researcher Leonard Stringfield investigated Hangar 18 for close to 50 years. In a rare interview just prior to his death in 1994, Stringfield told sightings that he had been able to track the progress of wreckage and alien bodies retrieved in several different parts of the Southwest. In the beginning, uh, some of them were shipped to areas in Los Alamos in the western uh, uh, sensitive areas from Albuquerque on down to Los Alamos and a whole region of New Mexico. And often time for further uh, analyses or study why they were sent to Wright-Patterson. I was told by one intelligence source here uh, some years ago <clears throat> that they had uh, 30 alien bodies underground at Wright-Patterson Field alone up to 1966. And reports persisted well into the next decade that alien bodies were still being stored at Wright-Patterson. One of the most interesting discoveries, I think, has to be the alleged alien jawbone that we uncovered. Officials within the Air Force intelligence community have told me that they had determined back in the 70s, possibly before that, that this was an alien jawbone. I can't have anybody go on record, however, now as saying that. I think the Air Force is hiding a lot of things. They are developing here on this base a lot of super secret weapon systems for the future. Those should be kept secret. They did issue a statement, though, that there are no aliens or UFO pieces on this base now. At the end of the 1950s, three aeronautic engineers left what was then Wright Field and returned to civilian life. Within one year, all three applied for patents with the U.S. Patent Office. All three wanted to patent flying saucer designs. 